Hey, Melissa Kerman here with Melissa's Crafting Treehouse here in the United States in the state of North Carolina. <laughs> it's like springtime here today. It's uh, in the 50s. I have the windows open and you might actually hear the birds chirping in the background. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. <laughs> um, welcome. So happy to be here today. I'm super excited. Um, just uh, was at the NC Demos Demonstrators event this past weekend, and there was so much creativity in one place. It was just amazing. <laughs> hi, Amy. Hi, Carol. Welcome. Thanks for letting me know you're there. <laughs> um, uh, or maybe Facebook is letting me know you're there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm glad you're here. So today, it's a. if you're watching this live, of course, you know it's a Facebook Live. Uh, if you're watching the replay, it, this was a Facebook Live. <laughs> Um, and I have some fun things for you today. I have a project demonstration featuring a technique that I haven't played with in a long time, uh, so I'm excited to share that, and I have two different projects that I'll be sharing. And then I always have a little bit in the way of news and updates. Hi, Kathy. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, 20 degrees in Sun Prairie, yuck. <laughs> um, <clears throat> anyway, I'm feeling very lucky that it's so warm here today. I'm actually... Uh, it's supposed to get in the 30s over the next few days, so it's not going to stay that way. Um, plus, I'm going to New York City to visit my mom, uh, leaving early Saturday morning after my club Friday night. That should be interesting, an early rise, um, but excited to see my mom. And we're actually going to stamp a little bit. I meant to pull the project that we're going to do, but she is, my mom was my partner in crime in creating the um, black ice technique. And one of the cards that I made after the original play session where we came up with the technique, um, she fell in love with and she hasn't managed to make it. So she's bringing some stuff and I'm bringing some stuff and we're going to be creating that uh, card. It's actually made with the waterfront stamp set and it looks like an actual um, na nature scene with water in the foreground. Some of you may, may know that particular design. So anyway, um, I'm really excited. So got some fun things happening. Uh, so uh, today, let's see. So I'm going to share the swaps from the NC Demos event. That's going to be, you know, I'll just take you on a quick tour of some of the things uh, we made and swapped and um, at the event. And uh, before I say anything more, I, I do want to invite you to share this Facebook Live, um, trying to get, uh, you know, more people on here. And it's fine if you watch on the replay and um, not the actual live, but it's fun to have people here live commenting and sort of being here with me. So um, please do share the event either now or um, later on if you wish. Um, and I also, let's see, a couple weeks ago, I, I tried to give something away. Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> I tried to give this nice little set of uh, ribbon and rhinestones to somebody. Um, and I set a goal of having uh, 25 people on the live. So I'm going to take the bar down just a little bit. <laughs> and we'll see if we can give it away today. So I'm going to say 15. 15 people. So we already have 10 people. We only need five more people. And then um, I'll do a drawing among the people who were on the live. Or, um, uh, and I'll you know, just take all your names and put it into a drawing. And then, of course, I'll need your address. So I'll reach out to you, um, leaving a comment on this live video. Or um, if I can reach you through Messenger, I'll try to do that. So um, uh, anyway, so I'm going to try to give that away. We just need to get up to 15 uh, live pe people live watching live. <laughs> And I'll give that away. So share, share, share. So sharing is actually one of the themes for today because I'm going to invite you to, uh, to a challenge to share your creativity later. I'll tell you about that in just a minute. So, um, okay, so things going on. As I mentioned, I was at the NC Demos meeting. I'm going to show you the swaps. Um, and in my newsletter, if you're a newsletter subscriber, I started last week a new thing where I do a tip of the week. So I had a tip last week, and I haven't yet gotten the newsletter out, but I'm in the process of writing it. So um, it'll go out later this afternoon. I'm going to have another tip in there. So, um, uh, and it could be, you know, all kinds of things, anything from your crafting supplies to being more efficient with the materials that you use or anything that I think might be found to be valuable by um, by all of you. So um, uh, let me know what you think of those tips if you would um, reply to the email or, um, or you can comment here too. So um, <clears throat> all right, so let's see. Um, 
Next, next, next. Okay, so one little thing I'm also going to include in the newsletter is uh, I want to get a gauge of interest in something I've been thinking about for a while called a technique club. Now, I don't have all the particulars down and I'm not ready to launch it yet, but I am trying to get a sense for um, the level of interest that people might have in it. So um, when I was, uh, well, years ago, I've done clubs for years, years, years. And um, for several of those years, we created um, some books, some technique books, and we would create a card and then we would create a sample um, of the technique based similar to the card and then it would go into a book. I'm going to show you the books now um, and I know my people really loved it and I sort of you know let it go after a while. I have two books filled with techniques so um, this is one of them. So we actually Stampin' Up! sold these um, these books. They were bound and everything um, for a long time and so we just um, uh, you know we would take a uh, a technique I would write up the details and then there would have it be a sample right there and these got bigger in time I made the lettering bigger just because uh, it was easier for all of us and it looked kind of prettier so anyway we're gonna be doing one of the techniques that's in this lovely book um, and then I have a second book and it looks like this and we don't sell these books anymore so we if I do a technique club it would the techniques would go into something slightly different maybe an album but this is my second technique book. Lots of fun ideas in there. Um, and anyway, so I, I love my little technique books. <laughs> um, so that just sort of gives you an idea. So now um, I want to show you the technique we're going to do today because I thought, well, I'm just going to go into this because there are some techniques that I've only done just once or twice and um, a, a long time ago with my, my technique um, with my clubs. So I thought, well, I'm going to go into those and see what little gems there are that I might be able to share with people. So this is the page that's the inspiration for today. We're doing a technique called spotlighting. And I tried it with um, four different sets. I'm going to show you two of them today. One of them ended up being a little bit more um, maybe complicated than I expected so I'm probably going to do a separate video of that to just kind of explain how I did it so um, uh, so there you go there are my technique books what do you think <laughs> um, so comment and let me know if you have an interest in a technique club or you can comment if you're on my newsletter uh, there as well um, so I think we're ready to get started. So for a couple weeks now, I've been mentioning that I needed a new rig for um, doing the Facebook Lives. So it finally came in the mail. It took like two and a half weeks. I was very impatient. So what that means is when I switch the camera, it's going to be, it's not, you're not going to hear those noisy, crazy sounds that you were hearing before from my very makeshift um, uh, rig before but it's also I also haven't um, done the switch so there's still gonna be a, a second where I have to kind of uh, get it positioned just right so bear with me um, should be a little bit better and you know as I move along doing this more and more hopefully it'll even get better and better <laughs> okay so I'm gonna turn the camera facing towards my windows it's a beautiful sunny day but the Sun's a little bit too strong to have the shades open so I'm gonna turn it around first Okay, and here we go, switching it up. You can see the base of my um, my little contraption right there. Okay, wait a minute, am I going the other wrong way? Going the wrong way, hello. Oh no, oh jeez, I'm so confused. <laughs> I knew this was gonna happen. Okay, I went the right way the first time. It's got a face like this. So people who do this a lot, they actually have, you know, like, two devices and one face is one way and one face is the other I'm not quite there yet okay can you guys see my space uh, let's see let's adjust that just a little bit okay interesting right okay so now this is a whole new thing for me <laughs> all right so um, oh gosh, I should have showed you. Jeez, I turned it already. Okay, well, um, I should have showed you all the uh, the swaps first <laughs> before I switched it. Well, I'm not going to switch it back, so I'm just going to show them under the camera. You just won't be able to see my face. So, and I'm going to go through them pretty quick because I don't want to be here all day long. Um, I want to. I know you guys have things to do and places to go. So this is uh, made with one of the celebration sets, the little cupcake. 
This is actually a floating card. I made one of these recently, so the middle is acetate, um, and it's held uh, together with the acetate, and then this um, is on the top. But that's made with the new celebration paper, which is so pretty. This one we made at the event, and this is actually part of the designer paper. The I think it's botanical butterfly designer paper that's a celebration paper, and this one as well. I think it's probably the best celebration designer paper I've ever seen. Um, these are punched out from the designer paper, and of course they're, they're already colored, um, and uh, so it coordinates with the punch, the Gingham Gala punch. This is one of the projects that we made. We did lots of stuff with butterflies, um, and this actually slips off. It's a belly band. It's created with cardstock, and then with that, um, what is it called? I forget what the ribbon is called. It goes with the Gingham Gala Suite, uh, but I'm forgetting what it's called. Anyway, so I created this um, belly band. This, like I said, was one of the projects that we made um, at the event, and then it opens like that. Probably should have a card uh, a piece on the inside. And when you do a belly band like this, you wanna make sure it's not too tight, but not too loose, right? So you can slip it off and on without too much trouble. Okay, um, okay, more. Okay, so there's another one, another butterfly card. This was a swap. Uh, I can't remember, this one is, this makes me think of Spirograph. Does anybody else make this think, them think of Spirograph? I got this set and the coordinating dies, so I'm excited to play with that. This was one of the things we made. I kind of mixed it up. I'm not even sure what the original was supposed to be, but the coolest thing about this card, I think, is that we created this little pocket. Can you see there? So we just used a, a um, quarter sheet of the wood texture designer paper, cut a slit, and then we actually made this little uh, ledge. I don't know, what would you call it, a ledge? And it wraps on the inside and on the outside to create a smooth edge. So you can tuck that in. So I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. Okay, now this one, actually, uh, somebody I was talking to, she's so sweet, um, was swapping. I had not, they, they, there were some external swaps. I didn't do them, but she, um, she just gave this to me. It was so nice. Um, and I, it, there's an Easter set. I, I can't remember what it's called, but I, I think it goes in, uh, it's in the Occasions catalog, but just a really super cute and a shaker card. Always fun. This one I love. Um, made with the High Tide stamp set and it's uh, an unusual opening, I guess you would call it. So it opens like that. That was also a um, shoebox swap card. It's another one, butterfly one. We made that one in the shoebox swap, love that. Um, this one is uh, was made by Barb, one of my team, team members, and it was her shoebox swap. I love that little ape, so cute. And this one, this is a dog, is from the Occasions catalog. Um, and I just think it's adorable. I'm not really a dog person, but I thought it's, it's just a cute little set and a cute image. This one was also team members, um, Melissa um, Reen, her uh, shoebox swap. And these are actually designer paper, um, the Celebration designer paper, as is this. But these start as white, and you sponge them to, um, to make them whatever color you want. And another one, um, this was a shoebox swap that we made. And this as well, we didn't actually make this one. So some we got to make, some we didn't. Um, some were actually made for us, which uh, instead of making 20 there, we made only 10, but that was pretty uh, a good plan because uh, otherwise we would have been there really late. Because <laughs> this was the evening activity after the actual NC Demos event. So there's another one with a little dog. Another one with butterflies, and another one right here. So um, this is, I think, that, I can't remember what that's called. Incredible You, Incredible Like You, something like that. I've done some other projects with it. Anyway, there's my um, my swaps. I have, okay, there's one more. This is actually a, a gift card holder, which was, it's sort of a technical feat because it, you actually punch and it opens like this. It was, um, it's really super cute, but a lot of work for this particular purpose. <laughs> but it was very fun to make. And I have one other project that I'm not showing you. Ha! <laughs> I know, I'm so mean. Because um, it's a technique that I think I have to show you another time. So, um, 
And is anybody watching the numbers? I just noticed that we're at eight. It was at 10 at one point and we need to get to 15. So since I am now not actually looking at the phone, so I can't actually see the number, uh, somebody needs to comment and let me know if it gets to 15. This is the honor system. <laughs> Remember, oh, I just realized there's another one I can show you that, um, uh, that I'm not keeping as a secret. So this I actually set aside because it's so pretty. It's actually made with items from the Occasions catalog and that's a die. And whoever made it, I mean, I guess I can't tell what they colored. I think they colored in behind, but um, it just turned out so pretty and I love the black with all the colors. All right, so now I think we're ready to move on to the project um, that I have for you. So I'm gonna now point the lights a little bit differently. Hopefully you can see. Okay, so spotlighting. We're using this set, Home to Roost. There are so many fun samples out there made with this set. Um, and I'm using the um, tin tile embossing folder. I've got some washi tape on there as a guide for another project that I was doing. But love this one. And then the subtle textured embossing folder. I'm not going to do that part on camera. I'm just going to have those items done um, to show you. So it's one less thing to do. And then I'm also showing a sample made with this one. That's the uh, All That You Are. This is in the Occasions catalog and just a beautiful image. I kind of fell in love with it when I first saw it. Okay, so first project. I just gotta find my pieces. All right. So has anybody done spotlighting? Um, have you done the technique? Um, if so, was it a long time ago? Was it recently? Um, if it was a long time ago, it'll be like a blast from the past. So as you can see, I have um, already embossed the card body. This is Cherry Cobbler. And um, when you do your, your dry embossing in the big shot, you're supposed to put the spine in first. And I'm, I'm actually figuring that the spine, um, they want you to go the spine in first because if you go sideways and you're, you're rubbing against the sides of the big shot, that this can actually um, wear down and actually cut and then you lose the, the fold, right? So I think that's why they, they tell you to do that. Now when you're putting your card front in here, you, um, I guess you, you can't, yeah, you can put it in spine first, but there might be other instances where you need to maybe put it in this way, and that's fine too, I figure. It's just rubbing against the sides that are open. So that's my little um, tidbit on using the um, embossing folders. This is also a thick embossing folder, just like the subtle one is. Um, and uh, so you only need one cutting pad when you do it and you spray your paper lightly before you put it through. Um, oh no, I just realized I'm getting myself confused. I didn't use subtle, I used the um, pine wood planks. <laughs> I used the subtle on something else just recently so I got confused. Anyway, so this one is uh, dry embossed. It's also a thick embossing folder um, with the pine wood planks. So now I'm gonna start with a little sponging and So this isn't the technique, I'm just doing some of the card pieces. So, and actually I can sponge or I can just add a little color by doing kind of direct to paper and I'm barely touching. Um, but I'm just gonna try this because I did sponging on the first one, on the original, and um, kind of got more ink on there than I really wanted. So that actually does, does the trick pretty well. Okay, so now I got my two base pieces. And now I'm going to stamp my focal piece. Usually I tell you guys where you're going, but I'm keeping it a surprise today. <laughs> okay, I'm, gonna, I'm using my Memento ink because I'm going to actually be coloring in my image. Now um, I have my little rooster on the acrylic block, and um, I have a little tiny piece of washi tape on the corner of, of her foot, his foot. <laughs> And that's so, this because this is a cling stamp and it's hard to get them up off because they cling so well. So if you have a little piece of washi tape there, it's just really easy to pull it up. So, and I use this really sparkly shiny one in this case, but any washi tape you have around will do.
Just doing my little rooster. And then I'm gonna do my sentiment at the bottom. I think I've seen more samples using this set than maybe any other celebration set, except for the Valentine's paper. <laughs> I'm not sorry, not the Valentine's paper, the, the um, celebration paper. Okay, so there's my basic stamping. And now I'm gonna sponge my edge with a little bit of crumb cake ink. I'm saving the best for last, what do you guys think? <laughs> Just doing a little bit on the edge. Dirty it up a little bit so that it goes with the dirty card base. Okay, there's my sponging. All right, and now let's do the spotlighting. So for this one, I'm gonna use a one and a quarter inch punch, and I've used one of my circle, my layering circles framelits. And what I found was, it's they're really smart. Stampin' Up's really smart. So there's a one and a quarter inch uh, punch. There isn't a one and three eighths inch punch anymore. There used to be. But one of these, and I'm pretty sure it's this one, is actually one and three eighths. And I found the same with the one and three quarters. There was a, what would that be? It'd be seven, seven eighths, one and seven eighths circle. So that means it works perfectly for this spotlighting technique because you really want a thin layer. And you'll know what I mean when I, when I get to it. So here we go. So I'm just gonna punch out my focal, my part of my Rooster, so you're going, ah, what is she doing? <laughs> it's a very important part of the process. And then I've actually already punched out a circle with my layering dies, circle layering framelits, and so it's gonna fit on there just, just so. So I'm gonna actually color this um, with my blend alcohol markers. I'm gonna start with my cherry cobbler, doing his head. This should be pretty quick, just because um, it's a small little image here. And I'm not gonna do a whole lot of shading, except for on his face, but I will on his body, or her body. <laughs> it's a feminist rooster. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the smoky slate on some to do a little bit of highlighting. And then I'm gonna use crumb cake for most of it. This is the light crumb cake. You can see I'm really just being very I don't know, what's the word? Casual about my coloring. Come in with a little bit of the dark. Do a little bit more shading. This is always the weird part for me because I can't see if anybody's commenting. I feel like I'm just doing this all by myself. You guys out there? Of course you are. <laughs> Anybody paying attention to the numbers? How many people are watching? Okay, I'm coming back in with my light. Just kind of blend that a little bit. Soften all those crazy lines I've put in there. And then I think I'm gonna come back in with a little bit more gray. I'm kind of being very haphazard about this. I think I'll come in with a little bit of the dark gray. So before these blends, I never really liked coloring in, so I kind of like the blends. And then if I wanted to, I could kind of mix it up a little bit with the, um, the color lifter, but I think I'm just gonna leave it like it is. Keep it simple, right? Okay, now just gonna attach this to my little black piece. This is where the, the kind of magic begins. 
attached my pieces. Um, now, because this is um, dry embossed underneath, what I found when I was doing doing it is that um, it really needed this white glue because the regular glue just was not cutting it. It was not staying on there. So I got this at an angle. And then I'm going to put a little bit of uh, twine around this part here. I like to cross it uh, in a certain way. So I go, let's see, how do I do this? Okay, and then just a quick little tie. Getting it tight is the biggest challenge. Didn't leave myself much of a tail here. Ah, holding it with my finger as long as I can. There we go. And then I'm just going to snip it off. Okay, I'll just kind of pull those out. Okay, now I did attach this with dimensionals. I think I will leave that to your imagination. I'll show you the end result. And because I attached this with dimensionals, I'm going to attach this one with dimensionals. You know what? I just got to do it. Just got to do it. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'll just put a few on here, get the idea. I'd probably put some more dimensionals on there if I weren't like trying to speed through. Okay. So do you guys find these dimensional backings everywhere in your whole house? <laughs> when we were at the NC Demos meeting this weekend, um, Erica, who was there, she, um, she's a brand new team member. She's been a club member for a long time, but she said there was a, a trail of dimensionals from the main room into the bathroom. I thought that was pretty funny. Okay, so because I had dimensionals on this, I'm going to put dimensionals on this so it stands up not too close to the edge because their edge is going to overlap that opening. Better take those off. The second project I'm going to show you is um, I'm actually just going to you know the method, so I'm just going to show you the how the card comes together. So I'm lining up the elements so that they line up with the rooster as if it were a part of the same thing. And voila! There is my spotlighting. Are you guys amazed and awed? <laughs> that might be a little strong. Anyway, I think it's super fun. Uh, just kind of a different twist. So. Um, the card that I cased this from was very much the same, um, except for the spotlighting. So it just kind of took a new twist on it, which I thought was kind of fun. It would be fun to share. Now this next one is actually um, my own design. It's nothing complex or anything, but um, I really like how it turned out. So I'm just going to show you how it, how the pieces come together. So purple and green, it's my favorite colors. Um, so there's your basic card pieces, and for this one, I'm using the All That You Are set, and I'm just going to stamp it again in the memento, um, or the memento. kind of want it on a, a bit of an angle so that I make sure I can get the whole thing on there and it doesn't, it's not too close to the edge. So there's my image and then um, I used the happy birthday that comes in the set and just tucked it right in here. So I'm going to do that. And with this one I like to test it on the paper to make sure that I 
know how I should angle it. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Tuck that in there. And then just like the other one, I'm going to use a circle punch. In this case, I used a bigger one, the one and three quarter inch punch. And you can see I've had this one forever because it's the old style punch. And then I just, I decided instead of just focusing on the flower, that it'd be more interesting to punch out a segment with some more of that detail. So that's what I did on that. And then, like I said, there's a black circle that goes in behind that. Actually, it's not black. I didn't do black this time. So now I'm just going to show you my almost finished one. And we'll finish that one up so you can see it. Skip a few steps here. So I've gone ahead and attached. I punched it out. Gone ahead and attached it. Put my dimensionals on the back side. Oops, yeah. And then I'm just going to attach this piece. Now in this case, um, I did not, there's no dimensionals between the white and the um, uh, and the Highland Heather. This is the light blue, purple is Highland Heather and the dark purple is um, Gorgeous Grape. Some of my favorite new colors and the Granny Apple Green, which I totally adore. Okay, so now it's figuring out where it lines up. So I'm looking for my stem there. Got my flower. And that lines up over there. And there's my simple card, right? So super quick. So my challenge to you is, oh my gosh, up oh, where you just hit 15. <laughs> I just happened to look. Yay, people. Okay, so now um, uh, there, there will be a drawing. Yay. So I'm going to draw for a ribbon and for um, these rhinestones right here. So um, uh, my next challenge to you guys, my sharing challenge, is when I was doing this, right, I told you I made four different things. One of them with the spotlighting was um, a takeoff on my Color Fusers blog hop project, which goes live on January 4th. So I'm not going to show that because it's supposed to go live and, you know, keep it a surprise. I think it's is that Monday? I think Monday the, Monday is the 4th of February. So um, the Color Futures Blog Hub goes live the first Monday of every month. And um, uh, so that's going to be that project. And I will probably share that spotlighting version on that post as well. So you can come back to my blog and check it out. And like I said, the other one uses a slightly different method because um, this card that we did here is done when, when you color in. And I found that when I was doing it with a stamp set that didn't require coloring in, it presented a different kind of uh, challenge. So anyway, that's going to be its own project, own video. And um, uh, maybe I should try to turn this and show my face again. I'm not sure why, but here we go. Let's see if I can do this. It's going to go face out. This is me, like, experimenting with making this. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Yay, I'm back. <laughs> no loud, creaky, weird sounds uh, coming back. So I just show you my two projects and stay tuned for um, the project that features um, the stamps that are not colored in. And I use the uh, flowering desert for that one and um, and then also come back to the Color Futures Block Hop if you want to see another one of these. So um, another a spotlighting technique card. And so my challenge to you guys is I would love to see your creations. I've done this technique with four stamp sets. So if I can do it with four, you guys can totally do it. So I want you to find a stamp set. It can be a coloring in stamp set, probably the easiest thing to do. And then you really just need to... Um, to figure out what part of the image you want to punch out, what size circle you want to use, and then just play with it. And um, one of my biggest and you know my biggest goals as uh, doing this as a job <laughs> is to inspire people to create. So I'm really really hoping that um, you guys will create uh, create and share here on the Facebook page, and um, maybe I'll even at some point figure out an incentive to to give a giveaway or something. Oh, actually. What was I thinking? I, hmm. Maybe I should do one today. <laughs> so, um, 
How about if uh, people share, I will do a drawing among the people who share, and I will send one of them this card and one of them this card. Okay, I know it's a little thing, but maybe you would like the card or one of them. <laughs> So, um, and I, and let's have a timeline. So where are we? Today is, uh, let's say, um, next Thursday. How about, um, well, how about next Wednesday and then Thursday we can announce the winners. Okay. So you guys game, tell me your game, give me thumbs up, show me some love hearts. <laughs> um, so I guess that's pretty much it for today. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sharing um, if you did. And if you didn't, please feel free to do it because you can share and people can watch the replay too. So um, uh, I hope you have a great day and that you create, create, create and share with me. I love you. <laughs> Happy crafting. Bye.